Thank you very much for that introduction. I would like to say thank you to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for this uh, invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start with saying that gender equality is a political goal, regardless of what other effects it has. Lack of gender equality is a reason to why Europe is falling behind, and there's no other area of reform with a higher potential. Equality between women and men is not only a question of fairness, it's also very important for the economy. Women's participation in the labor market must increase. In all EU member states, employment rates are lower for women than those for men, with big variations across the EU. In the EU, the employment rate for men was 75% in 2011. It was only 62.3% for women in the same year. In the EU, one man out of 10 worked part-time, and the average for women was 3 out of 10. The reduced access of care services, in particular childcare, creates difficulties combining work and family life, limiting the possibilities for women to work. And those women who work still earn considerably less and are concentrated in jobs that pay less. These gaps in terms of women's participation and progress in the labor market are problematic, not only in terms of gender equality, but also in economic and social terms. Women face a higher risk at poverty, especially at retirement. Women are increasingly highly qualified, even surpassing men in educational achievements. But the low labor market participation represents a waste of human capital. The need for gender equality is more urgent than ever. Europe has achieved a lot during the last century, but during this time, access to employment and education has to a large extent been the privilege of men. What if women, the other half of the population, had had the same access to knowledge, education and employment? Where would we be today? The increase in female employment in the rich world has been the main driving force of growth in the past two decades. It has been a mistake not to connect gender equality with economic growth and development. Figures show that women's increased participation on the labor market has accounted for a quarter of the economic growth in Europe since 1995. In the long run, viewing equality also as an investment in our economic future is fatal. It requires constant awareness and policy actions. Development can only come through determined work together with a shift in social norms. We need to work on changing mindsets. Young women face problems getting into the labor market. When they wait until after they had children, their career chances are reduced. The share of care and household duties are key to this. In previous times, men contributed with money to the household and women with the time. And it's still pretty much like that today, but more women also work, so women have two jobs. Sweden, my home country, ranks as one of the world's most equal, gender equal countries, based on the firm belief that women and men should share power and influence equally. An extensive welfare system makes it easier for both sexes to combine work and family life. But however, ever, there's still room for improvement in many areas. In Sweden, parents are entitled to 480 days of parental leave when a child is born or adopted. Women still take most of the days. In 2012, men took about 24% of the parental insurance. The high female employment rates in Sweden, it's 82%, has an explanation in access to affordable childcare and a generous parental insurance. As I see it, we have many challenges ahead to make the EU and the world a more equal place. But there are a few things that I want to point out here for you today. We need economic independence for women. We need equal pay. We need equality in decision making. We need to stop gender-based violence. And we need access to affordable childcare of high quality. We need reforms of the social security system, such as parental insurance. And we need to promote gender equality beyond the EU, and we need to integrate gender mainstreaming in all EU policies. But it's impossible to talk about gender equality without mentioning this. It is one of the most common violations of human rights in the world. 
one of the least prosecuted crimes, and one of the biggest threats to lasting peace and development. I'm talking about violence against women and children. It is time for action when up to 70% of women in some countries face physical and or sexual violence in their lifetime. When one in three girls in developing countries is likely to be married as a child bride. When millions of women and girls are trafficked in modern day slavery. When women's bodies are a battleground and rape is used as a tactic of war. It is time for action. Violence against women and girls is an extreme manifestation of gender inequality and gender-based discrimination. The right of women and children to live free of violence depends on the protection of their human rights and a strong chain of justice. When it comes to preventing violence, we must address the root causes of gender inequality and discrimination. Evidence shows that where the gender gap is greater, women are more likely to be subjected to violence. We need to focus on erasing the gender gap. Parts of the solution are participation in the economy, education, and representation in politics. Last year in Sweden, over 26,000 cases of abuse against women were reported. Every year, an average of 17 women are murdered by a man with whom they have or had had a close relationship to. The cases of violence reported to the police accounts for just 20 to 25 percent of all the violence that is committed. The right not to be subjected to violence is a question of democracy and human rights. And despite the fact that Sweden has come a long way in terms of gender equality developments, violence against women remains a widespread social problem and a serious type of crime. Almost half of all women in Sweden have, after the age of 15, been subjected to violence by a man. If men didn't see it as a right to buy women's bodies, there would be no need for a law against purchasing sex. This is a problem about norms and a problem about demand. Through criminalizing the purchase of sex, we move the guilt and the blame from the women who sell to the men that buy, and we send a clear signal from society saying that buying bodies is not okay. A law can be the first step towards changing norms of society, making sex purchasing unnormal, strange, and a non-acceptable behavior. The Swedish law of criminalizing purchasing of sex was introduced in 1999, Many people were claiming it would change nothing, the prostitution would simply move, and that victimizing the women would help no one. More than 10 years after the law was passed, a study was made that shows that the street prostitution in Sweden has been halved, and it also shows that prostitution hasn't moved underground. Another effect of the law is that trafficking women for sexual purposes has lowered as well, as Sweden is seen as a country where it's very difficult to establish a market. So the claims that the law would change nothing is simply wrong. But we still have a lot of work to do. Money needs to be allocated to help the women, but also to educate police, judges and social services in how to tackle the criminals and how to meet the women. Many countries in Europe are very interested in the Swedish law against purchasing sex. And I welcome this, and I think it's time for all EU countries to make this step and to say it's not okay to buy bodies. But I just would like to summarize, we have not much time left here, but I think the most important thing towards reaching gender equality we need to fight for economic independence for women, equal pay, equality in decision making. We need to stop the gender-based violence. We need access to affordable childcare of high quality. We need reforms on the social security system, such as parental insurance. And we need to promote gender equality beyond the EU. And I think it's time for us to say that it should be criminalized to, to buy sex, to buy sexual services. So thank you very much for your attention.